In honor of Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... long we've been celebrating women's history month by talking with female leaders in sports politics business and entertainment and nobody takes down anderson up enough seven easy there's a reason why after 100 channels destroyed anderson up enough seven is still here there's a reason why nobody want to get in a beef with Angel Snuck Nup 7. But you don't take me seriously. And now your ass is barbecue.
We are in a state of emergency. Want to show about it? Like here? Here go. Freedom Soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come. It was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for, a change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Edmondrod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi.
This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi Champagne represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics. The law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. I wanted him to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Stupno. What was the question again? I didn't hear. He still didn't answer the question, sir. He still didn't answer the question. He still, still didn't answer the question, sir. It's still got a lot of jobs to grow up. Some people spoil their children. They won't let them grow up. They keep, no matter how old they get, they keep them. They want to do things for the child. Let your child grow up. Let these black people grow up.
Afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. There's no need for introduction. That's the purpose of the opening uh, promotional video. Of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Before we get started, and this was unknown to me prior to this broadcast, and uh, I would like to apologize if it's necessary 
for getting an early start on the broadcast if it uh, caused any inconvenience. <clears throat> I'm so happy that you would give me the honor to be able to bring to your ears a few words. It is an honor because you don't have to listen. You don't have to give me any of your time. I am so happy that you would find me worthy because once time expires, we cannot get that time back. So I certainly most appreciate it. Unbeknownst to myself, I just learned that the father of our deacons, Deacons of Reality Productions, Soul Brother 85, Twin Pyramid, I just learned that this was an anniversary date for their late father. So I would like to dedicate this broadcast and I'm hope that I'm worthy of such dedication. I would like to dedicate this broadcast in the memory of our brothers, their father, the anniversary of their father transitioning this life. So I would like to give just a few moments of our time in memory of silence to our brother, father, the deacons of reality, twin pyramid and soul brother 85. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the deacons of reality, our brothers are so valuable and so special to us here on this platform. I could not be who I am and I could not be where I'm at right now if it was not for the strength the inspiration and the motivation and the wisdom coming from these brothers. Please correct me if I'm, I'm in error, but I believe I was told by them that I remind them of their father and their father's view their father's opinions and ideology was much like myself. So we hope to continue his legacy because he is part of all this. And although he could not be here with us, we carry on and wish to bring into reality a better world that which he himself envisioned and clearly have passed this on to his 
children. So the realities took on earth, we remember and in memory, our brother, the deacon of Reality's Temple, father, this anniversary of his transition or his passing. <clears throat> Liberation first. You are our guiding spirit. I hope that I can be worthy to take reality and open that door just a little bit more because it's the real solution to our problem once and for all. Once and for all. That's the key. Once and for all. And we're not about waiting another 100 years or 200 years. If we implement and embrace reality, this horrid condition, this bad place that we find ourselves in, in our personal and even life as a group of people in a similar circumstance, we can turn it all the way around. It is the minds like myself and the minds like the father of our deacons. That is the mentality. That is the mindset that will make us free because it is the only real truth. And even according to religious teachings, it is the truth that shall set or make you free. If we have been doing all these other things and we're not free, then clearly something is wrong. We must not have the truth like we believe we have. Maybe we have some truth, a little truth, but it takes the definite article, the, the real truth in order to set or make us free. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I just want to make a short commentary. And I am I am inspired to probably come back with us tomorrow, probably at this same time, <laughs> because of a Facebook post I was involved in. I think that would be a real nice subject for tomorrow. So we don't, I don't want to what they said, burn bridges and, and wear out my welcome. <laughs> so we want to try to do this as quickly as possible and probably come back tomorrow with uh, this other topic. As you know, this is the healing. All last year, for months, five or six months, we went through what we call the purge. And so now we are invested. And this is now the fourth month of what we call the healing. This year, we want to heal. This year, we want to be positive and be the best that we can be. I will not get caught up in beefs. I will not get caught up in YouTube drama. You're not gonna draw me into that nonsense. We had enough of that last year. We had enough of that that could last for years. And there is no benefit for me and there was no benefit for them. I heard through the grapevine that there are those who continue the beefing and the hate and the malice and the slander and the gossip. I will not participate. We have, we have uh, 
up, uploaded some videos from last year, but we know that's from last year. Time passed. And we look over that time. And it's over. Whether it makes us look good, makes us look bad, what happened, happened. But this time, where we're at, we are healing. And to my knowledge, all those involved in the madness, in the insanity, in the slander, in the gossip, they continue to do that. But we here will not participate. So you can say my name, you can make a video about me. I do not care. We will not be drawn into that foolishness. Thus you make me a liar. Thus you make us hypocrites like yourself. Thus you make us weak-minded like yourself. We will not participate. This is about the healing. Now, as you know, I have reached out to YouTube, I have reached out to Facebook, looking for people to bring to this platform, to bring us a message, a positive message, to bring us healing. Do you know, I can't find nobody that wants to come here and talk to us about healing. But as you know, there's no problem with people wanting to come with slander and gossip and hate, insanity and madness. Had no problem finding people like that, that want to argue, talking about killing folks and slander and gossip and nasty, vulgar behavior. No problem. This is a shame. This is a shame. At the same time, there was somebody who came to me saying, I have to unsubscribe from Angel Snub Nub 7 because you're too negative. And I see the same person on these channels where they are beefing, slander, gossip, infighting, they can't get along with nobody. But Angel Snub Nub 7 is the one that's negative. They take their time to babysit you and tell you that you're a god and you're a goddess and all this nonsense and you're a warrior and pump you up. That's what you want to hear. They are really negative. What you call negative from Angel Snub Nub 7 is I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. I have to tell us the truth. I have to tell us the truth. Truth hurts. That's the problem. And you can deny the truth and you can try to run from the truth. But it is what it is. If my breath stink, my breath stink. Absolutely, Mellow. Life is rough. No sugarcoating this truth. I don't know how to. How do you? How do you tell a person your breath stink? 
You're not a friend if you don't tell your friend, hey man, your, your breath cutting up. You don't have to be nasty about it. You don't have to be vile about it. But you don't want them to go around with stanky breath because you have people that won't tell you. They just talk about you behind your back. Lord, ain't your snub dust seven is cool, but God damn, his breath stank. Woo! Hey, he been eating a lot of fish. <laughs> we can tell. I try to tell the truth. <laughs> it smells like doo doo. The breath smells like doo doo. You know, it, exactly. If there was doo doo on the floor, it was there. I didn't make a big deal about it. That's life. Especially when you sick, when you sick and going through some crap, that can happen to anybody. So what? I didn't do that. Don't, I, what's the shame? So what? Hey, how you doing, Corey? What's the shame? It can happen to any of us. <laughs> Deacon said, I hope it's fish. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> let's, let's do this commentary. Commentary. <laughs> commentary and call it a day because I think I'm fired enough I would like to come back tomorrow and do another topic <clears throat> so the the topic that we've chosen today this afternoon is black people have fallen Black people have fallen and they can't get up. <laughs> Black people have fallen, can't get up. <laughs> I'm very sure this is a very popular commercial. You have the you have the elder person walking around, and they fall, and they falling. They're trying to advertise and want you to buy this bracelet. Ah, uh, I'm falling. I, I can't get up. Help me, help me, help. I'm falling. I can't get up. Believe me, that's uh believe me, that's a very terrible place to be in. Now I'm not that old, but I have experienced falling and can't get up. It's a bad, it's a helpless feeling. You feel so pathetic and weak. It's a bad place to be that you've fallen. And no matter what you do, you don't have the strength to get up. Help, I've fallen. I can't get up. So the narrative that is spent in pro-blackness, pan-Africanism, blackly black, the narrative that is spun is that the black man is the original man. And we brag about that. When the Caucasian or the white man tells us about his supremacy, how superior he is, or this is how we was taught, we fire back. <laughs> wait a minute now, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Peckerwood. The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, 
cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. Scientists say that humanity originated in Africa, Africa, not Europe. Humanity risen, the origins of humanity is in Africa, Africa, the out of Africa theory. The reality is we really don't know. Also, we have to take into consideration, I believe, somebody can correct me in the chat room, I, I believe that it's also taught that all the land masses used to be one land mass, and as time went on, the it broke into pieces, forming Africa, Europe, Asia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what happened. So actually, what you call Africa didn't even exist in the beginning. All the land was one. It's one piece. But even so, we're going to use this as an example. Right. We call it Pangea, right. Absolutely. See how smart we is? <laughs> Even so, we're going to work from this narrative, this story, that the original man is the black man. At one time, it was an all-black planet. That's what we're, we're told. Everything was black. Okay. So look. If you are the original man, and if you're first, don't common sense tell us that, well, since you're first, then you have the opportunity to do things first that somebody behind you didn't have a chance to do. So I played basketball before my little brother did because I was first. I'm older than he is. I listened to the radio before my baby brother, because I was first. I used the toilet before my baby brother, because I was first. Do that make me better? Do that make me greater? Because I was first to do something? Because I was first? So we first, and we taught all the other people on the earth how to take a bath, learn the sciences, and okay, that's groovy, that's great, all right, cool, you was first. The problem is, you was first, but you had no competition. The black man ruled the earth, there was nobody else around, so you had no competition. You bragging because you was first and the black man ruled the world. That's what you're, that's what, this is what we're bragging about. Black man ruled the world. But you had no competition except among yourselves. There was no competition. So you bragging, but as soon as competition but as soon as competition gets on the scene, you fall apart. And it don't take long for you to fall. You've been ruining the world ahead of the game for thousands and thousands of years, you, you, you say. And then you force your, you want to teach your way of life and your civilization on others. Then they take what you taught them, according to your logic, according to your story, they take what you taught them, then they turn around and kick your ass. And before they actually kick your ass, they became in competition for the resources of this planet. And you, you was their example.
Because many of us, as you know, the older brothers, the parents, we influence the children behind us. So if your mother and father, if they drink and smoke, the children, most of the time, want to drink and smoke. If your parents are liars and gamblers, that's what the children want to do. If, your, if the parents are Christians or Muslims, that's what the children want to do. So you want to take yourself out of the equation if the black man or if the African is the father, the mother of humanity, then you was first, then clearly the behaviors of those who follow, they must copy what you was teaching them. Like Eric Muhammad said, talk black to me, talk soul to me, however you want to do it. Come on. Come on with it. If you was first, you was the one that influenced the ones that behind you. So if they are liars, if they're rapists and murderers and pedophiles, drug addicts or whatever, you was first, apparently and clearly, you must have been the example to kick the whole ball game off. Yeah, well, you, you see, uh, the Africans were spiritual. The white man teaches us religion. But it comes from spirituality because you taught the world, your spirituality. The only difference between spirituality and religion is one is organized and commercial. Organized and commercial while the other one is not. But the other one ain't no damn better because it's organized and it's tyrannical. All of it is mind control. All of it is enslavement. Wherever you find spirituality, wherever you find religion, you will find people oppressed. You will find people docile in their oppression. You will see them complacent in their horrid condition. They don't have any fight because they waiting on the spirits. They waiting on some power. They waiting on aliens. They waiting on demons. They waiting on somebody. to do what they should be doing. So you bragging, the original man is the Asiatic black man. The Africans, we was, uh, the Africans was first. But as soon as the competition showed up, you fell apart. You've been around for thousands of years and as soon as somebody new people come on the scene you fall apart and get your ass whooped. Now you're angry and you're, and you're mad. And when you think about it, you caused it because you, you said you was first. You was not holy. You was not righteous. It's impossible because the only recorded history that we have is patriarchal civilizations. There's nothing peaceful. There's nothing loving about patriarchal societies and civilizations. Violent. These civilizations have the king of the mountain attitude. You have men who want to be on top of the heap. They want to control the other men. We even see some of this in, in the natural world. Males want to dominate other males. There's no equality. I'm the head male. I saw this nature program and uh, it's so bad this, this big boss lion his son this is his son his son took his father's place I think it was a lion or I think it was tiger. It was tiger, I believe. This, this thing about the male being strong or wanting to be over other males, the son, listen, this is what this is what the tigers do. 
this son hunted down his own father and killed his own father because there can only be one, one big shot in the territory. So he hunted down his own father to kill him. And he killed his own father. This is the mindset. This is what's happening right now. This is part of the mindset behind the Ukraine war. This is the mindset behind all the wars and conflicts all over the earth. You have men. I'm the head. I'm the king of the mountain. I'm the big shot. But that's what we have. That's what we have, king in the mountain. And this must have been the behavior that the original man expressed. That's why all those who follow behind the original man, this must be the behavior that everybody else, all other men copied from the very beginning. I would not be bragging about I was first, I'm the original man, and I did this and all that crap. But even so, there's a time limit. Everything has a time limit. The Bible says it's like a blade of grass. You come up, then you wither it away. There's no such thing as immortality in our reality. We live and we die. Only in fantasy and fiction, we live on and on and on and, and whatever. But in this reality, in this reality, your happy ass gonna die. And we accept that. So it don't make no difference how great you was in the past. We come up and we go down. When we look at something like tennis and we had Arthur Ashe and Billie Jean King, they were the rulers of tennis. But as they was doing their thing, Venus and Serena Williams was coming up and get replaced. In this life, in nature, it's always replacing somebody. Who the hell you think you are, you believe you can't be replaced. That tiger killed his father. He was, the father was replaced. And that son is gonna be replaced. That's our life, that's how things go. It's very rare that you get a second chance. Very rare. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Sugar Ray Leonard, all of them was, was, was the big shots in the boxing world. That's over. You do your time and it's over. You can't stay on top forever. You get replaced. Now here on this platform, we're just seeking simple justice and want liberation. We just want to be able to be independent and we just want to be liberated from an oppressor. It has nothing to, to do with, I'm better than you. I want to rule the world and all this crazy ass stuff that you get from being brainwashed, living in a patriarchal civilization or society. That's not what it's about. You can't stay on top forever because you're going to die and you're going to be replaced. So Michael Jackson is no longer here. And I believe the best that we got now is Chris Brown or somebody. <laughs> and Beyonce, whoever, you do your time 
and you move on. There's a lot of great people in nursing homes. They were great entertainers, great business people, great teachers, professors. They in nursing homes waiting on death. They took somebody's place. That's life, y'all. That's life. And even when we when we are alive, We must be able to adopt and change because nature will cause us to go extinct. Your DNA, your kind is not worthy of life. And you will be gone forever. Our only way that we can seek some type of immortality or to continue to live on, and we as individuals, we're not going to live on. But if we want this species to continue, then we have to be able to adapt and change with the environment. There are many animals who are extinct because they could not handle the change. They could not handle the environment. There are many animals on the endangered species list right now because of habitat construction. Uh, uh, destruction and, and environmental changes, if they cannot adapt, they're going to go extinct. If we cannot adapt, if we cannot change, the same thing is going to happen to us, not only as a Black American people, however you want to call us, but the human being will die, never to be seen again. So we have these people psyching up our minds, telling us how great we are. The original man is the Asiatic black man and the melanin in your skin is gonna do all this and we so great or whatever. They hyping you up like you better. Well, you know, we are the greatest people. Uh, we have a third eye and the penile gland and melanin in your skin. We are the original people. They hype you up with all this talk. But you can't compete. You can't compete with the new people on the scene. You've fallen and can't get up. Why you can't get up? In that commercial, it says, help. I've fallen and I cannot get up. Why do you say help? Because you're unable on your, on your own merit using your own power, you can't get up on yourself. So you're asking an outside source, help me. I've fallen and can't get up. And we have done this. Help me, Elijah Muhammad. I've fallen, I can't get up. Help me, Noble Drew Ali. Fallen, I can't get up. Help me, Allah. Help me, Jesus. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I've, we've fallen and can't get up. Well, did they answer your prayers? Did they answer your requests? Because if you're still falling, then apparently those things, those people, those things did not help you none. If you're still falling, and it's very clear, and we know that we are still falling. We have not gotten up.
and we are ashamed to say that we're falling. We're ashamed to say we need help. So while your happy ass is laying on the ground, you falling and cannot get up to make yourself feel good, you talk about things from the past. Well, you know, ancient Kemet. Then you go out to the Chinese store and you buy some Egyptian clothes. <laughs> you, buy, you buy some Egyptian clothes. You go to the Bible and you dress yourself up like a, a, a sheep herder or, or some ancient person. You think what they look like. Put on a bow tie and some bean pies, or, 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 or some kind of fez with a tassel on it. And you talk about the past when you could walk a little bit. I sure remember what the Nation of Islam did in 1965. I sure remember what the Moore Science Temple did in 1945. I sure remember what they did in Kemet, talking, always talking about the past, when you could walk a little bit. But now you've fallen and can't get up. You can't say and talk about anything because you have nothing, you, you've fallen. You can't walk. You don't talk about the present. See, this is why Angel Snuff Number 7 is negative. Because I remind us in the present, you've accomplished nothing except some tittling wink stuff. You've accomplished no more than what our ancestors done right off the slave plantation. You want somebody to jump for joy? I just bought some land. So slaves bought land. And I'm not making mockery, but I just saw a post by our, by our brother Tahaka Bay. And on the post, the caption is separating the real from the fakes. And he's bought some land and they dug a well. And my people was illiterate. Third grade education, first grade education. They had land and, and, and dug a well in the 1960s. What, what are you doing, sir? What are you doing that my illiterate grandparents couldn't do. I was a little boy and watched them dig wells and get some water. What does it prove? What are you doing? You're doing nothing no different than the slaves did right off the slave plantation. That's nice. I'm glad that you have a little land that you bought that somebody else still control the laws that can kick you off or they can tell you what you can and cannot do on your land. You don't own nothing. That's a that's an illusion. I own the land. You don't own anything. You you are renting. How much of this land you're gonna own if there was World War III and Russia came in and China came and took over this place? Since you claim that you own it, we only own things to the point where we can defend it. My computer, I own my computer as long as I can defend it. Somebody pull a gun on me or, or whatever, or steal it, I can't defend it. It, 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 no, it no longer belongs to me. We need to stop and get out of this, out of this, this way of thinking about we own land. You, nobody can own the earth. You can use it for a certain period of time and that's it. Who knows how many people have lived and died under our feet? The house that we live in right now, who knows how many people 
and animals have died right under our feet. We don't own a damn thing. You can only use it during your time. And once your time is over, it's done. So you're not doing anything in the present. So clearly you don't have a future. Hell, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> this is what we look like right there. Hell, I've fallen. Can't get up. <laughs> Fat. <laughs> Look at this cat. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Now, this is the sad thing. If you have fallen and can't get up, who are you to, to be picky about who comes to help you? How can you fall and can't get up and some drunk can barely stand himself, come and try to help you? I, I go away. I, I don't want your help. You, you are drunk. I'm uh, <laughs> doing the sniffy. Yeah, I'm trying to help you. No man, no. Unless, I'm trying to help you get up. <laughs> you don't want no. You don't want any help from Sniffy, because he's a drunk and a crackhead. But but Sniffy can walk. Sniffy don't need your help. Well, leave your happy ass on the floor. And that's where we find ourselves right now. This black man and woman. We so arrogant. We want to pick and choose our help. You falling and can't get your ass up. You don't have the power. You don't have the strength to get yourself up. So here we are. The Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. A new solution. A new mindset. A new way of doing things to look at life. Righteous without being religious. Having black pride without being a damn racist. That's what we are. You can have black pride and you can be a Pan-African without being a hateful idiot. Stupid as hell. These people, black and the black people, act just like the white races do because they are the offspring of them. They are the consequence. They are the result of white racism. That's why they act. They even use the same language. They call you Sambo, Kuhn, or Qatar. The same language that the racists use, they use the same stuff because they are them. Chocolate-covered racist wannabes. And it's a good thing they don't come into power. Because you might think, and at one time, I thought, if the black man came into power, things will be better. I would tell you, and you can use the purge as an example. If these people ever got power, any kind of control, we would be in real, real bad shape. You'd be asking for white folks, please white man, come and take control again. These Negroes crazy, these black African, whatever they are, they crazy as hell. Because they crazy and insane, and don't have power. So what you think gonna happen if they had control, if they did have power? They are incompetent. They have no vision. They have no purpose. They live in some kind of delusional life. So here we are, the reality is still on earth. We're offering help because you said that you've fallen and can't get up and you've been blackity black over 100 years and your, your happy ass is still on the damn floor you've been a christian and a muslim and a moorish and a moor and comedic all these things and you still land 
on the floor. So here we are. I will help you. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't that. Hell, I'm falling and I can't get up. So we supposed to feel sorry for black people when your dumb ass, when there's help being offered to you and you reject it, the hell with you. Lay on the floor. I hope the rats eat your ass up. And some of us do live with rats in these housing projects and some of these slumlord buildings, the rats are actually eating your ass up. Trying to help you. Angel Snub Nub 7 don't know what he's talking about. Angel Snub Nub 7 is crazy. I have to give credit to our brother, our Moorish brother, Tahaka Bay, because this is what he told the people, and I guess I don't think that he really believes it himself. Some of you may remember Tahaka Bay said this on one of the broadcasts. This man used his legal skills to get himself up out of his situation. Angel Snub Nub 7 versus the state of Missouri by myself. There was no team of lawyers. Me by myself versus the state of Missouri. Now, some of you don't understand. That's big. I'm not bragging on myself, but that's big. I'm by myself. I have to have the wisdom. I have to have the capability to dodge all their little tricks, all their little schemes and conniving, use their law to put myself in a position so I can talk to you today. By myself. No gun, no lawyers. It was all about thinking. It's a chess game. When they make a move here, I gotta make a move there. Chess and checkers. You don't know how to play the game. So you mean to tell me, I cannot advise us how to move forward when my goal was to get myself free and I was able to move around and put myself in a position to use their law in order to set myself free. What is it? The truth shall set you free. The truth shall make you free. The reason why it took so long because I did not have the truth. If my mind was like the mind of Tahaka Bay, if my mind was like the mind of Maurice Muhammad or Sister Nandy or Sister Noble or Aaliyah Portchop or any of these people, if my mind was like these folks, I wouldn't be here to talk to you right now. Still be locked up. Because their mind is rigid. Their mind is somewhere in la-la delusional land. They don't understand the reality. If my mind was like Aquisha, I'd still be locked up. They live in some kind of fairy tale land. Don't understand what you're dealing with. Because if you have the truth, the truth shall set, the truth shall make you free. I had a truth and being by myself, the only skill I have is being able to read, being able to write. But in reading and writing, I have to understand and comprehend what I'm reading. 
I understood who I was dealing with and maneuvered. And I'm telling you, the same strategy, the same mindset that I used in order to beat the state of Missouri, because that's what I did, they told me I'd done the impossible. It's impossible. They told me that for years. It's, it's impossible. You can't get out of here without our approval, without the way we want it done. I proved them to be a lie. I proved them false by myself. Even the lawyers that was given to me towards the end, they would tell you it was me. I was the one. I was the driving force. I did this. Thinking, not being emotional. Thinking, understanding what I'm dealing with. Being a thinker. Now, you can be a thinker and still be Moorish. You can be a thinker and still be a Muslim. You can be a thinker and still be a Hebrew Israelite. You can be a thinker and still be committed. The problem is you're not your you're so loyal to this to the to this religious side of of the equation you're not allowing yourself to think properly so you're not able to look at your situation in the appropriate manner so you don't get full truth you get a little bit of truth some truth but you don't get the real truth and the only thing that's going to change our condition is the real truth. Except reality, my friend, is much easier. I don't know what I'm talking about. So not only did I set myself free, but I have set other people, help set them free. Well, oh, that's nothing but the law. It's the same stuff. It's the same mindset. It's the same strategy. You know, I'm going to say this and we're going to get out of here. What I did for myself was a, was a baby bean pie. Baby bean pie. Little, little baby bean pie. But what you do when you're cooking a bean pie for hundreds and hundreds of people, you have to take that baby bean pie recipe and learn how to multiply it so that you can feed a hundred people. So my situation was individual just for me. But I understand how to multiply the strategy so that it can feed the 40 million so you can have that truth and that truth shall make you free. It's very simple. But, be, but we're arrogant, like acquisition. We're arrogant and selfish and arrogant, know it all. So I guess you satisfied laying on the ground and letting the rats and the roaches and the fleas eat your flesh. That's fine. We're not here to be your savior. If I if you say help or I offer you my help and you reject, I'm not going to beg you. That's your business. You want to die. You want to continue to suffer. That's your business. I'm not going all out of my way. We're not your savior. We're not a messiah. We're just somebody that has some experience offering you some help. If you don't want that help, that's, that's cool. And I will sit back and we will sit back and keep talking about your happy ass. You ain't nothing but a bunch of losers. And that's what you are. How the hell are you going to be a winner? You falling and can't get up. The reason why you are not a liberated people, the reason why you're not free is because you don't qualify. You've done nothing to qualify. The reason why I can talk to you on YouTube today because I qualified. That's why.
I can talk to you. You are not free. You don't have reparations. You know why? Because you don't know you don't qualify to get any reparation. You don't qualify. You're not free. You're not liberated because you don't qualify. And somebody want to show you how you can qualify. I don't, I don't, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, go on. Keep, that's cool. That's cool. And we will keep sitting back being negative, as you say, and keep talking about your happy ass because you're losers. Our people did not win. And it's not being disrespectful. They won, they won some battles. They lost the war. That's the reality. Because if they won the war, how the hell can you be falling and can't get up and your happy ass is still complaining about who oh, the white man do this and the white people and the devil and all this other crazy ass stuff you're talking about. You deserve to be right where you at on the damn bottom. You can't compete with nobody. The only thing you have is a big, big ass mouth talking about what you can do and what you used to do. Nobody give a damn about what you used to do. We built the pyramids. We we discovered all the sciences and astronomy. Well, nobody give a damn about what you used to do. And that's not you anyway. Your ancestors and our origins and beginnings was on a damn slave plantation. Never, You've never been out of America. Taking credit for crap you don't have nothing to do with. How pathetic losers you are. That's just like if my son or my cousin, they was drafted to the to the NBA. I'm talking about look what we did. I ain't do a damn thing. I didn't, I'm not playing no basketball. That's my son. That's my cousin. That's what they do. That's their, that's their history. That's what they do. Taking credit for something you don't have nothing to do with. Loser ass. A bunch of losers. And I will say this in, in conclusion here. The topic is black people have fallen and we can't get up. You're talking about the original people or these really these a lot of these Africans and whoever, whoever these first people was, the original people was. So that's them. And they may never get up. And if you want to attach yourself to people who have fallen, that's your business. Native American people, Aboriginal, whatever you want to call them, they have fallen, may never get up again. These Africans and these Islanders, whoever, these people, these Hebrew Israelites or the more, all these people have fallen, may never get up again, no matter what you do. There are old people who fallen, can't get up, and they die. And they die. They never get up again. That's life. That's the reality. There's no help for them. So if you want to attach yourself to Africans and Aboriginal people or ancient Hebrew Israelites or Moors, all these people, some of them exist, some of them don't exist no more. You want to attach yourself to people that have fallen and may never get up, give up, give up, get up <laughs> again. That's your business. But the so-called Negro the descendants of slaves born in America, you are in a different position. You have opportunity because you never was up to fall again. We're not part of all that. Now, if you want to be part of that, that's your business. But we're not, we've never been part of that. So you have an advantage. You can rise. You can do what they could have done. And you can see the mistakes 
that the Africans made, you can see the mistakes that the Europeans made and the Mexicans made. We learn from the mistakes of all these humans. Take advantage of the mistakes that these human beings made. So not only that you can rise, but your rise will be greater than theirs and your and your rise will last longer than what they've done. That's the position that we're in. And you can be the catalyst of a new beginning and you can be the example of a new humanity. A humanity that can cause people to follow a path of a better life in the future rather than on this current path which is one of self, self extinction. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Don't get angry at, at Angel Snub Nub Seven because you want to be a loser. Because we're here to help us to win. Some of you have played basketball. Some of you know how the coach talked to his people because he wants you to win. And some of the things that a coach might say, man, that's some bull. The coach is trying to get you, put you in a position so that you can win. He has no reason to want you to lose. The purpose of the coach is to help you win. There's no reason, I have no reason to want you to be a loser. I want us to win. You have to listen to people sometimes. I was driving, as many of you know, I drove a truck. I was driving my truck. And I have about, when I've been driving on and off, I've been driving a truck since, 1982. And so here comes a guy that just got out of truck driving school not too long ago. He told me he just got out of truck driving school. He's going to tell me, well, you know, you, you, should, you should do this and you should do it. I'm looking at him. See, I understand your attitude. I understand where you're coming from because I'm still the same way myself. I'm looking at this guy. What the hell can you tell me, sir? I've been driving trucks since 1982. You just came out of truck driving school a few months ago, and you only had, uh, what, like uh, one or two months of training. What you going to tell me? I was arrogant, like, like you, like that, just like you are. I'm turning... I'm not doing it in front of him, but I'm turning my nose up. Basically, I'm, you can't tell me nothing. But see, there's a dip. There's a difference between you and me. I start thinking about what he was saying, and then I decided I'm going to use that. Let, let me see. And do you know? I took his advice, and it made my job easier less dangerous i'm like wow incredible see you think you're smarter than angel snub nub seven you think you know more than angel snub nub seven well i've been doing this for 45 years i've been doing this for 50 years i've been doing this all my I... look what elijah muhammad did look what the more science temple did Look what the uh, comedic folks did. Look what the church done. It. Who are you? So I know your attitude because I had the same attitude with the church. And then he's, he was a white guy. And some of that bias, prejudice stuff is still in me. I'm looking at this white guy. What can't tell me nothing. White people are always trying to tell a black man what to do. That's, that was going on in my head. But the difference between you and me 
It's not about the vessel. It's about the knowledge. You chipping up. That's Angel Snuffing Up 7. It's not about the vessel. It's about the knowledge. So the difference between you and me, even though I was tripping on the vessel, I still gave the knowledge an examination. I still gave the knowledge a try. And it made my job easier. Less dangerous because some of you may not know it. Driving these big long trucks around the, the country, it's a dangerous job. You make one small type of mistake, you can end up dead or you can kill a lot of people. And this information that I got from this person helped me avoid a lot of a lot of a potential accidents. But if I was like you, I wouldn't take his advice. I'd probably be messing around and, and gotten in some accident or something by now. Because I don't like the vessel. You don't like Angel Snuffing Up 7. You don't like how I say or do things. So you ignore the truth. You reject the truth. You reject the knowledge. And then you get angry because you fallen and can't get up. But when a hand reaches out to you, ah, I don't, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with them deacons. I, I don't want Melo to touch me. I don't want Sister Sister Ann to touch me. I, I don't want Razzie to mess with me. I don't want Phil Fox to well go on about your business. Keep looking like a fool, laying on the floor, looking stupid. And I'm going to sit back in the cut and talk about your dumb ass. It's as simple as that. <laughs> we are in a better position. We could do much better. Those people times that you talking about, they did their time and it's over. This is your time. What you gonna do during your time? Are you gonna be like them? Or are you gonna be better than them? This ministry is advising and coaching us, we can be better than they ever thought of because their time is over. Their time is dead, and you and I are alive. Wake your brain up. Start thinking for yourself. Get out of these religions and these traps of ideology. Understand and embrace knowledge and, and truth when you see it, regardless of the vessel. Even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught his followers. Study the white man. Study the vessel. Take what benefits you and throw away what don't benefit you. You can throw that away. Even Elijah Muhammad taught that. And these Muslims don't like Angel Snuffing Up 7. On that note, I thank you so much for listening to us this afternoon. I have another I have another topic I would like to touch on tomorrow which will be interesting. More more negative stuff. <laughs> more negative stuff from from Angel Snow No 7. <clears throat> but we have to be told these things. And I'm not here to babysit us. You're not going to get better being spoiled and people babysit you. That's why you have fallen and can't get up. Because you think somebody is supposed to hold your hand and kiss your little knee. Oh, baby, it's going to be all white. Right. Look at us with our children. 
Look at us when we spoil children. We don't mean to do it, but usually when we spoil these children, they just rotten. And you're doing them a disservice because children need discipline. Children need to hear the word no. No, you cannot have those shoes. No, you cannot go to that school. No, you need to turn that TV off and that computer off. Read your books. Children need to need guidance. And when we spoil them, some of these spoiled folks, it's horrible. We spoil our children because we love them. A lot of us, we grow up in poverty and, and, and then we get a little something, something and we don't want our children to, to, to be poor and, and suffer like, like we did. But they have to, uh, but you have to have balance in that. They have to understand life is no joke. Then they get in trouble and you always have to bail them out because they don't have any kind of sense. They have not been made to pay and understand how to solve problems. You love them. The world don't give a damn. The world will blow their brains out. The world will put them in prison forever. The world will sell them as a prostitute, put them on a stripper pole. The world don't give a damn about your children. You're the only one that care about your children. The world don't. And when you spoil them and they go out in the world thinking people are supposed to gonna love them, they have a rude awakening. So let's not do that. And that's what these black conscious, blackly black teachers do. You spoiling the people. They can't comprehend the reality, the situation that they're in until they get in it. They have to learn things the hard way. Why should they, why should children have to learn things the hard way when we already been there, done that? Guide them in the best of manners. That's why I'm talking to us. Because I understand your black conscious, blackity black. I understand that kind of mindset. I've been there, done that. It's bull doo doo. It's not going to get you nowhere. I'm telling you. So when you come here, I'm not going to spoil you. I got to give you the ass whooping and the, and the slap on the hand to help you so that you can survive. I'm a survivor. I'm going to make it. We're going to survive. We are new. We are fresh and we have a greater potential than Africa. We have a greater potential than Kemet. We have a greater potential than all these things that you foam at the mouth about. Your potential is greater if you learn how to think for yourself, accept reality. Accept reality, my friend, is much easier. So on that note, we're gonna get out of here. And I'm going to, I'm going to think about how I feel, but I feel pretty good. And I want to talk about another topic uh, tomorrow. And um, one of the deacons said, if you need a good read tonight, check out uh, my, my, uh, <laughs> my biography, autobiography. And that's the link there. The um, the link is in the description box. Also, if you want to donate to this platform and show appreciation for the words that come from out of this, this platform, cash out at Angel Snuffin' Up 7. Also, Z, what, Zelly. Also, uh, PayPal. Um, subscribe to the Deacons of Reality uh, YouTube channel. Please do that. Subscribe to the Deacons of Reality YouTube channel. Also, um, 
Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. Our YouTube channel, Operation Exodus, was, uh, of course, it was deleted because it was affiliated with another channel. But there's a lot of our videos in relation to Operation Exodus Mississippi on our Facebook page. Actually, join me on Facebook. Join Angel Snub Dub 7 on Facebook. And uh, I think that's all the announcements. And with that said, I also, going out of here, I also, again, we want to, we dedicate this, this broadcast to the deacons of reality in memory of their father. I don't know what their father's name is. I, I just, that's why I, I just been saying the deacons of reality's father. In memory of his transition, we dedicate. I appreciate these brothers. They are uh, warriors. Let me find that original post there. I'll put that up real quick. Man, I wish I wish their father was here. Boy, we be we we be some bad boys for real. But we powerful. We are we are powerful regardless. Nobody can't touch us. Where's that original post in? Oh, hey, I'm almost there. Let me see. Here we go. We dedicate this broadcast to uh, the late father of, of the Deacons of Reality, the twins there. And I hope that what we presented, the message that we brought today, I hope that it was worthy of his memory. Brother James, in memory of Brother James, so Brother James, we salute, we salute in memory of Brother James, Deacons of Reality's father. Much appreciate these brothers. They they some bad boys. <laughs> Woo, they some bad boys. That that uh, those productions and something else. I, I'm I'm glad I'm not on the other end. <laughs> Shout out to our brother James. He's always going to be, always be here with us. Every broadcast, Brother James is here. So on that note, thank you for listening. I hope that this, uh, again, that this broadcast was worthy of our Brother James, Deacons of Reality in the House, Mellow Cap, Sister Ann, z Man, Brother uh, Denzel, Rogers, Brother Talib, Angela Hines. Uh, I hope that did I miss anybody? Angela Hines, Thea Fox, our our super super MVPs. Shout out to all our super super MVPs. Thank you so much. Thank you for all those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast uh, later on. I appreciate it. And um, we're gonna catch you on the flip. And look out for the notifications because chances are I feel pretty good. Chances are we're gonna we have another topic I would like to mess with real quick. Uh tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, 2:30. We should be we should be good. And uh also I'm doing pretty well on my exercise program. I feel great. And now I did a lot of bike what they call it, the bicycling, stationary bike stuff. Now I'm going to control, uh, concentrate more so on uh, stomach crunches, you know, because uh, really I have no problem with my legs and, and thighs and nothing like that. It's trying to get rid of this, this pooch. I hate, I hate it. It, it, it. it sucks. So I was feeling like, I was feeling like the way a Leah pork chop looked. I, I had to do something about that. I got to get on this bike. I've been on this bike almost a month straight and my breath is back. I need to find me a basketball court to get on. 
Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. This is the time to live. Reality is still on earth is about life. It's about living. Get your ass, do a little something. Do some walking. Do some kind of exercise. It's not always about how you eat. You're going to have to exercise. Get that blood to flowing. Get that heart to pumping. Do something. Sit around here and, and, and get fat and lazy. I, c- I couldn't do it. And actually, my inspiration is, is a Leo pork chop. I do not want to look like that. I do not want to look like that. Get my lazy ass on the bike. I'm half sleepy. Yeah, I'm half sleepy on the bike. <laughs> I put in an hour and a half. <laughs> with a, hey, brother, to, to live, how you doing? Brother to live in the house, y'all. Shout out to brother, brother to live. And uh, yeah, we're going to come back tomorrow and do a little something, something. I don't know. Do you want to, do you want to join me tomorrow uh, to live? Cause I, I can send you the link. If you want to join, I'll tell you what the topic is. Let me know. And uh, so again, in memory of, of the brothers, uh, realities, uh, De- deacons of realities, uh, father, brother James. We dedicate this program to, and we thank you so much for listening. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow and then uh, bring you some more negativity from the reality tip, <laughs> from the reality tip on earth. Internet message. Okay. Yeah. You go ahead and study. You knock that out. Brother to live. Take care of your business. Take care of your business. On that note, as our brother Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and so we are the 5,000.